Hey everybody, here's the update to the Necromancer healer build uh, for Harrowstorm slash Greymore. I've checked out the patch notes and everything. A uh, couple changes like monster sets or new trial sets would change, but overall the build's gonna stay the same except for maybe a different monster set. I'll put that in the update if it were to be that way. So this should be good for the future also. Let's get right into the character stats. We've got almost 32k max magicka, almost 19k max health, almost 12k max stamina. Our magicka recovery is at a 2400, which is very, very big. Plus, if we pop the mender, we get even up to 2581, which is more than enough. Spell damage clocks in at around uh, 2377, and spell crit at 29%. However, the spell damage will go up with uh, our weapon glyph, so it'll be close to um, close to 3k almost then, if that procs. Uh, we've got 64 points into Magicka, and we're using the Atronach Mundus Stone to increase our Magicka recovery even further. And then we've got, for food and all, the Witch Mother's Potent Brew. Previously I was running Disastrous Bloody Mara or the Flat Fruit, but we've got so much health already, like almost 19k, that we can easily run Witch Mothers. Which gives us a little bit less health, but gives us more uh, Magicka recovery added to the Max Magicka. So we run this pretty much for the extra Magicka recovery, to never run out of uh, resources. For potions, I'm using the Essence of Spell Power, and I'm using the cheaper ones, which don't give the crit. If you can afford the uh, ones with the three buffs on them, the, they'll give you not only spell damage and magic uh, recovery, which we have, but also crit, which can be nice on a healer. However, a stack of them currently is 70k on PS4 EU, so I'm not gonna go do that, because it's just not really worth it, to be honest. These ones are cheaper with the two buffs, with the spell damage and the magic recovery. So just use those, and if you don't want to afford those either, just use random Essence of Magicka or the Essence of Health that gives you Magicka recovery as well, and a little bit of health in case you ever run low on it. Shouldn't really happen though. Alright, let's get right into the skills. The first thing on our front bar is Energy Orb. This is very important because not only is it a great heal, it's also a synergy, and it's also restoring resources for your team. So as you can see here, the orb floats around, it gives uh, healing to everybody and if people uh, activate the synergy, they heal for almost 7k health, plus they're restoring almost 4k magicka or stamina, whichever is higher. So this really helps out with the DPS's resources, it looks like this, you just throw this orb and it floats by, everybody it passes by can activate the synergy and gets a bit of healing, and if they take the synergy, they get resources back which they need to do damage. Next up is Illustrious Healing from the Restoration Staff skill line. First thing you unlock starts out as Grand Healing, morph it to Illustrious Healing. And this is pretty much just a healing field on the ground. It's got a radius of 8 meters, lasts for 12 seconds, and every 1 second your targets inside of it will heal for 1800 health. Looks like this. You just put the circle down, and everybody inside of it gets heal over time. So always keep that up underneath your group. Reapply it every 12 seconds when it runs out. And you can't have more than one of this on the ground, unfortunately, you used to be able to. But if I put one over here, this one will go away. And if I put one over here, this one will go away. So just always keep that under your group to have them be safe and have a heal over time. Next up is our Burst Heal. This comes from the Living Death skill line. First thing you unlock starts out as Render Flesh, morph it to Blood Sacrifice. This is a pretty big Burst Heal. It heals people for over 10k, either you or an ally in front of you. However, it will also apply Minor Defile on yourself for 4 seconds, reducing your healing received or health recovery. So try not to use that if you know that there is a big attack or a big uh, bunch of damage incoming in within 4 seconds. Other than that, it's not really that bad. As you can see, 3, 2, 1, gone. The negative effects don't really last that long. Just make sure you're not using it when for example, you're in an execute phase in Halls of Fabrication or something where a lot of damage is coming in because you might kill yourself with it. Other than that, you can easily 
use this a couple times to give people or yourself 10k health back on the spot so it's pretty good burst heal the next thing we've got also from living death is the intensive mender this starts out as spirit mender and this conjures a ghost uh, by your side for eight seconds which will um heal you or the lowest health ally every two seconds for a total of over 8k health and it also creates a corpse on death which is important for one of our back bar skills looks like this he lasts for eight seconds and he'll heal either you or the lowest health ally and um if he dies he'll leave the corpse on the ground okay the next thing is very important this is also from the restoration staff skill line and it's very important to keep that up every 8 seconds, that's how long it lasts, because not only does it heal the allies in front of you, it grants them minor berserk and minor resolve, which increases all their damage done by 8% and increases their physical resistances. So you give them more resistances, but more importantly, you increase their damage done by 8%, and that's quite a lot, especially if you've got 10 people uh, from the raid group in front of you. You always want to keep that up on them every eight seconds just to always have their damage increased by about eight percent okay the next thing we've got is also from the living death skill line the ultimate is renewing animation this is a aoe res meaning in a range of 28 meters uh, with a radius of 12 meters you can resurrect up to three allies in that target location and you also restore magicka and stamina for each ally you attempt to resurrect so this is pretty good for progression groups like if you're progressing to veteran trials or even normal trials or veteran dungeons trying to get a hard mode done or something like that <coughs> or just trying to clear it really it's a big field it looks about like this and everybody inside the circle will get resurrected uh, up to three people though i'll get into additional skills later in case you don't need this because you might be going for a no death run for example where it's not useful to have a resurrect ulti on because then you've pretty much failed anyway <laughs> all right back bar elemental drain from the destruction staff skill line this is very important for healers it starts out as weakness to elements morph it to elemental drain and what it does is it afflicts the target with major breach increasing uh, reducing their spell resistance by 5k that's quite a big debuff for the boss looks like this just put these flames on it and then it has the um, major uh, major breach on them and its spell resistance is reduced so always try to keep that up especially on a boss to always make it easier for the DPS to kill it faster and it also for magicka DPS applies minor magic steal so every time a magicka DPS attacks a target and that buff is on it they will restore 300 magicka every one second so that makes it a lot easier for the sustain for your magicka DPS as well and it reduces the resistances always keep that up on the boss next up is our healing field so to speak also from living death it starts out as life amid death morph it to enduring death and what this does is it's either a 6k sort of burst heal for everybody inside the field or if there is a corpse on the ground it will stay on the area for about five seconds and uh, if there's more than one corpses on the ground it will extend the duration even more so it's very nice to put down if there's a couple of dead ads on the ground if there's no corpses it looks like this bam 6k heal for everybody inside the circle but if there is a corpse on the ground which is why we use the intensive mender that only lasts eight seconds and then will die and then you consume the corpse and it looks like this and it will stay on the ground and heal everybody inside of it and if there's more corpses than one it will stay even longer so this is a nice healing field you sort of gotta work around having the mender up and when he dies using this to get the field on the ground that stays on the ground but it's nice and easy to get used to and I'm sure you'll uh, you'll be able of doing so okay next up is the overflowing altar the reason I chose that morph is because the synergy heals for more than the sanguine altar and our health is already almost 19k so we can easily afford casting this this does cost health however what it does is apply minor lifesteal to everybody in a radius of 28 meters, which is quite big, meaning that anim uh, allies who attack things in that uh, 28 meter radius 
will heal for 700 health every one second while they're keeping up their damage which should be the case most of the time and then they can also activate the blood feast synergy healing themselves for 65 percent of their max health so as you can see this costs health if i cast it i lose health however since you're the healer and you've probably got maybe this healing field this healing field this healing thing down if it's uh lasting and then if you cast it your health goes straight back up to 100 percent because you're already in these healing fields so just make sure that you're not casting it when a lot of damage is incoming or you're not standing in a healing field just not to kill yourself but it should be easy enough not to die casting this because we've got over 18k health and we pay 4k for this and with a healing field in the ground we get straight back up to 100 anyway alright the next thing comes from the bone tyrant skill line agony totem starts out as bone totem and you morph it to agony totem now this can be used on adds or allies and you want to use it on allies because if you use it on adds it will uh, put minor vulnerability on them which is nice but it will also fear them and uh, cause them to stand still and not move and not, they can't be moved for four seconds so don't screw up the tank stacking if the tank is trying to stack them over here and you're putting the agony totem on them here then he can't pull them over anymore because they're feared in place over there so just make sure that you are not screwing up the tanks uh, the tanks uh, stacking of ads now what you want to use this for is actually put it on your group say if all of these were my allies and I'm healing them I want to put this totem on them to grant them minor protection because then for 11 seconds all their uh, damage that they're taking is reduced by 8% so it just uh, helps your group stay alive plus as I said it can also be used to fear enemies but usually that's the tanks drop so you don't really want to do that and another really cool thing is the allies that are standing inside of it while you're giving them uh, the minor protection can activate the uh, pure agony synergy dealing 7k magic damage over 5 seconds and applying minor vulnerability to the enemies or the boss increasing their damage taken by 8% so this gives your group minor protection it gives them a synergy that they can use for their undaunted passives or if they're running sets like Locastes or anything that procs of synergies plus it also puts minor vulnerability on the boss or the act group if they take the synergy so all around it's a very nice skill just make sure not to interfere with the tank's work when you're using it then we've got obviously elemental blockade this starts out as wall of elements morph it to elemental blockade you slam your staff down it's called elemental uh, blockade of storms because we're using a lightning staff and it's dealing shock damage for 14 seconds every one second plus enemies can be set concussed and off balance meaning they will take more damage off balanced enemies take more damage especially so if the dps have the exploiter passive in their CP which grants them 10% more damage against off-balance enemies so they do take more damage in general and then even more with that passive it looks like this you just want to put this on the boss or an egg group and then you want to see the off-balance proc as you've just seen here in the right corner and when off-balance procs the enemies will take more damage all right the last thing on our back bar is of course aggressive horn this comes from the PvP skill line Assault. You'll need to play a bit of PvP. I think it's uh, rank 4 or 5 you unlock it at, probably 4. It starts out as Warhorn, morph it to Aggressive Horn, and we're using this to increase our group's Max Magicka and Max Stamina by 10% for 30 seconds, and more importantly, to grant them Major Force, increasing all their critical damage done by 15% for 10 seconds. So, if you need a big DPS burst, or just generally, use the Warhorn, to give everybody um, more crit damage by 15% which is quite a huge chunk alright now let's look up what other skills could be useful for a necromancer here we go into the optional skills alright let's see what I've got here one thing you could use is unnerving boneyard this deals frost damage applies major breach and fracture in, uh, reducing their spell and physical resistance by 5k to all of the enemies inside the circle it can also consume a corpse if there is any to deal more damage and people can take the grave robber synergy dealing uh, frost damage and healing for the damage done 
So this is a nice option. If you don't want to use Agony Totem, you can run Unnerving Boneyard. It looks like this. Put the Boneyard down and everybody's resistances inside of it get uh, reduced. Plus there's a synergy for your DPS as well. So that is a nice option if you don't want to use the Agony Totem because maybe your group's already got minor protection from elsewhere or your tank doesn't want you to use it because you might interfere with his uh, stacking work. Or your tank is a necromancer and he's already using it. For example, you can just swap uh, Boneyard in. If you've got enough Warhorn power in your group, because maybe you've got two tanks that have Warhorn and one healer that has Warhorn, and their ultimate regeneration is so good that they can pretty much use Warhorns every 30 seconds without uh, you needing to, you could use the Glacial Colossus on the back bar, which uh, does frost damage but more importantly applies major vulnerability to the target and uh, increases its damage taken by 30%. This is pretty huge. Necromancers are the only ones who can do major vulnerability. So if your group is fine on Warhorns and you don't have any other Necro in the group, I would suggest using this just to get the major vulnerability on the boss uh, as often as you can instead of the Warhorn or instead of the re renewing animation. I probably put it instead of the Warhorn because you're either going to be trying to pump out as many Warhorns as possible or Colossuses, but not the same thing. So if you have that on the back bar and this on the front bar, you'll just not use one of them. So if your group is fine on Warhorns, use the Colossus and give everybody the major vulnerability on the boss to increase their damage or reduce the, uh, or uh, increase the boss's damage taken, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, another thing you could use is Necrotic Potency. Uh, I probably wouldn't, but if your job is to pump out as many Warhorns or Colossuses as possible, it might make sense to put this on because this consumes corpses and gives you ultimate back for every corpse. So this really helps with ultimate uh, generation. You could, say, slot it where the altar is if you don't need the blood altar. Or maybe where the mender is if you've got corpses on the ground anyway. Though I'd probably put it here. And then you could uh, suck up all the corpses on the ground and get a whole lot of ultimate back and then spam a lot of warhorns or colossuses. However, this is very situational. Uh, if you're in a set raid group, just ask your raid leader what he'd prefer you to run. Um, yeah. Alright, we've got the intensive mender. Uh, another nice skill to have is Crushing Shock because sometimes you need to interrupt things and Crushing Shock uh, will interrupt people. It just looks like this. So if the boss is casting an ability or channeling an ability so to speak, you can interrupt him with that. So if you ever need an interrupt, that's the skill you want to go for. Restoration Scarf skill line. There is a pretty much just radiating regeneration and healing ward which could be useful in certain situations. Let me quickly put this back on. So, Radiating Regeneration is a pretty big heal for you or up to three allies, which heals them for 18k over 10 seconds. So that is actually pretty big. Um, just looks like this. You put the staff up and up you and up to three allies can be healed for 18k over 10 seconds. This is quite nice in situations like maybe Asylum Sanctorium where people are running all over the place or they're far apart from each other so you can't really hit everybody with your illustrious healing or your combat prayer or your mender especially in in Asylum Sanctorium if they're using slime craw they already have the the buff from combat prayer so instead of combat prayer there you could use something like uh, radiating regeneration and then the last skill that's helpful from the the rest of stuff skill line would be healing ward. Uh, this gives uh, a shield, so to speak, uh, protection that absorbs over 5k damage to you or the lowest health ally. And the shield's uh, strength is increased by up to 100% depending on the severity of the target's wounds. So this just looks like this. You put a shield around yourself or the lowest health ally just to help them survive a little bit more. This might be useful in situations where you gotta heal the tank only, for example, and there's a lot of damage incoming. Yeah, it's pretty much a very niche use for this, but it's nice to have anyway if you wanna be a dedicated healer. 
I definitely unlock it and get the morph. Um, exactly. All right, what else do we have? It's always good to have a damage shield if you want to. You can get Amulet and morph it to Dampen Magic or Harness Magica. Just so you have a shield for yourself in case you're in a veteran trial where you need to shield up at certain phases. Other really nice stuff to have is a uh, a taunt like Inner Fire in case you're doing Dragon Star or in case you're doing Cloud Rest and you've only got one tank and you need to go to the portal and tank the thing down there so it doesn't shoot the DPS dead. Uh, obviously you shouldn't be taunting things as a healer normally but there's a couple niche uses where it's helpful so I'd unlock it anyway. Another nice thing you could get is trapping webs or even bone shield in case you need a stronger damage shield than the one from the light armor skill line. And then another thing you want to get is efficient purge. This just cleanses yourself or group members. This is very nice in trials like Halls of Fabrication where people constantly get debuffs on them or set on fire so it's definitely a must-have skill for the healer even though it doesn't always need to be on the bar you should always have it leveled uh, at hand so to speak and then the ultimate reviving barrier which is super cool this is a 30 second uh, damage ward that absorbs up to 28k or even 30k I think when it's fully leveled damage uh, on your group so if you're going for things like no death runs or you're in a group where you know people won't die much anyway uh, just put this on instead of living death because you're not gonna need to resurrect people but it's always good to have that huge damage shield ready at hand that lasts for 30 seconds uh, and heals everybody over 15 seconds for 16k health this is a great ultimate for a healer you should always have that leveled unfortunately you need to get to rank 6 on support line so you've got to play a bit of Cyrodiil or Battlegrounds, but it's definitely worth it because if you're not going to run the Resurrection ulti, this is a huge, huge damage shield for everybody in the group, and it saved my ass a lot of times in dungeons. All right, so much for the skills. Now let's quickly look into the passives. I'll try and make this as short as I can. When your spirit mender dies, your next spirit mender's cost is reduced by 50%. You definitely want to get that because we're using the spirit mender. This is not too important. It just uh, increases your critical strike chance. And we don't really have any Gravelord abilities slotted, except for if you're running the Boneyard, so you don't need that. When a Gravelord ability is active, your spell and physical penetration are increased. You don't really need that either unless you're running the Boneyard. Rapid Knot increases damage done by damage over time effects by 15%. You definitely want that. Bone Tyrant. Whenever an enemy in combat within you dies, you restore 2000 Magicka. We definitely want that because if people die, we get Magicka back. It makes sustain a lot easier. Reduce damage taken from damage over time abilities by 15% while you have a Bone Tyrant ability active. The only thing we're actually using from there is the Bone Totem. However, this gives minor protection to the people inside. And this will also uh, reduce the damage done from damage over time abilities for ourself. So it's nice to get that passive if you can, if you have the points. It's not totally necessary, but it's nice to have. Um, this one increases your healing received for each Bone Tyrant ability slotted. This would be 2% on the back bar if you're running the Agony Totem, but it's not definite. It's not really necessary. It's just a small buff. So I got it because I had the skill points, but if you don't have them, just use this instead because this is a great passive. It just increases your max health randomly by the 1200, which is why our health pool is so high. Definitely want that. Living Death, you want all of those because that's the healing skill line. While you have a negative effect on you, healing done is increased by a percent, so it makes your heal stronger. While you have a living death ability slotted, your crit chance with healing abilities increased by 20%. So uh, you definitely want that as well. When you use an ability on a corpse, you generate 10 ultimate. We do that a lot because we have our mender up. And then if he dies, we can use the uh, healing field. So definitely want that as well. And then under Confederate, while your Spirit Mender is up, your Magic uh, Recovery is increased by 200. That's also very big, you definitely want to get that. Let me put the Mender back on for a second. Uh, yeah, this is how we got our Magic Recovery that high, really. Right now it's uh, 2347, 
and then if the mender is up, we go up to 2665 even. So huge, huge, huge magic recovery. Uh, this is the safer route to go. However, you could even go with the ritual Mundus Stone for increased healing because even if the even if the mag recovery drops down from two six uh, to two three, it'll still be more than enough. However, this is safer because maybe you're new to the build and you don't really remember to keep your mender up at all times it, since it only lasts eight seconds. So definitely go with that. Right, so much for these passives. Obviously you want all of the destruction stuff passives and all of the resto stuff passives since those are the two weapons we're using. And you want all of the light armor passives. In the medium armor you only need the Windwalker and the athletics one. And in the heavy only the first three because the last two only work if you've got five or more pieces of heavy armor on, which we do not. Fighter's Guild, the only thing you could get there is Banish the Wicked if you accidentally kill something even though you're the healer. Uh, you generate ultimate can be nice to have and undaunted these are very important you got to level that up to at least nine to get both of the passives fully active because this gives you more health stamina and magicka and this increases uh your max health max stamina and max magicka by two percent for every type of armor worn this is goes uh, this goes off of synergies and you can take synergies too as a healer all right support if you're playing barrier on the front bar, which you do quite a lot if you don't need the res ulti, you get uh, increased magicka recovery from magicka 8, so definitely get that passive if you can. And then obviously you want all of your racial passives. Another really good thing to get is the medicinal use one, but you need to level, level up alchemy to 50 for that. I haven't gotten around to doing that yet, I probably will at some point, it's just that the um, stuff I need to level it up quickly is quite expensive right now, so if I'm just going to wait a bit. And I'm fine anyway, because as you've seen, we've got huge chunks of magicka recovery and everything. Okay, so much for that. Um, yeah, most importantly, barrier, definitely, as a swap-out skill for the Renewing Undeath one. Because you might run in groups where you know people ain't gonna die a lot, or in a trial group where reses are super fast, you might not even need that. <coughs> okay, so much for that. Let's quickly get into the gear. I am running the Master's Restoration stuff. This comes from Veteran Dragonstar Arena and in the next patch from Normal Dragonstar Arena. So it should be really easy to get with a spell uh, damage glyph empowered for increased healing. What this does is the initial heal of Grand Healing gives everybody uh, 100 magicka and stamina back for 4 seconds every 1 second. So it's pretty good for the group sustain. You can. Uh, uh, have your DPS not run out of magicka and stamina because you keep on pushing their resources with this and grand healing by the way is illustrious healing that's this thing here so every time you put this on a group for four seconds they get magicka and stamina back and if they need more resources you don't even have to wait the 12 seconds till it run out you just reapply it early and give them even more magicka and stamina back so this is very nice for your group support you could also use the asylums resto stuff not really sure if I've got that with me at the second. Let me take a look. Yeah, the Asylum's Resto stuff. That would mean your next Magicka ability that you use for healing is reduced by 27% in cost when you cast Blessing of Protection. Blessing of Protection is Combat Prayer, that's this here. And the next thing you do will have a reduced cost. But our sustain is fine with our big, big Magicka recovery. So the Master's Resto is definitely the way to go if you can get it. On the back bar we've got all the Remus Lightning stuff. This is not so easy to get. You need to run Cloud Rest and uh, it drops pretty rarely, but it's definitely worth getting it. Because all the Remus is a set you can run on the back bar only. Why is that? Because adding to the Magicka Recovery and the Minor Aegis that you get, reducing your damage done from Trial and Arena Monsters, you also get a buff called Major Courage that you can give to the group. Uh, and All Reams is the only set that has that currently. The buff is pretty strong because it increases everybody's weapon and spell damage by 240, uh, 58 for 30 seconds. Uh, so the way this works is you need to uh, cast a ground ability. We're only running this on our back bar. So our back bar has Enduring Undeath, the Blood Altar, Agony Totem or the Blockade of Storms. I like to do it with the Blockade of Storms or the Enduring Undeath 
because those things cast really close to me. The blood altar is right on me and the agony totem is in best case a couple of feet away from me. If you're right on the group you can easily cast all the with these two skills. However it's easier to cast it with this or blockade because you know where it lands. So you need to be in combat. How does it look? Just like this. Let's get in combat. I put an Ellie blockade down. My team's here. I'm behind them. The Olorim circle lands right on my team and the blockade still goes on the boss or the ad. So you always want to make sure to place this circle right on your group. It's only on your back bar. Um, you can also pop it with Enduring Undeath if you want to place it in a more specific thing with the uh, blockade it's just gonna land right in front of you sort of and that's why Olorims is really good on a back bar because you can cast this circle the circle will stay on the ground the buff will stay on your team and you can swap to the uh, front bar where you don't really have the five piece bonus from Olorims but the circle is still gonna be on the ground so that's really nice that's how you can combine these two sets very well the Olorim's jewelry is completely in arcade with spell damage glyphs on everything because our magical recovery is fine as it is we can go full spell damage and then the back bar stuff is charged with shock damage in glyph uh, enchant because uh, charged gives you a 220% more chance to apply the status effect meaning the off balance so we want to set things off balance that's why we're running a lightning stuff and charge will help us achieve that a lot more often. Front bar obviously powered with a spell damage glyph as I said before for more healing. Okay for a monster set I'm running Symphony of Blades here. What this does is it gives you an extra 4% healing done and when you heal an ally who is under 50% of their primary resource you grant them Meridia's Favor which restores 2200 magic or stamina every one second for six seconds. So this is also um, very very good for group sustain and it gives you a little healing done bonus as well. It's one of the best monster sets as of now. It will get a little nerf in Greymore, so it remains to be seen if it's still worth running it. But however, for now, it's still uh, probably the best healer set you can get just to support your group sustain even more. And um, yeah, and then we'll see. I'll get into uh, optional sets. No, actually, let, let's do it right now. Things you could use if you don't have Symphony of Blades because Veteran Depths of Malata is quite hard is Sentinel of Rikugams. This is sort of the small version of uh, Symphony of Blades. It also gives you 4% healing done. And when you heal yourself or an ally, you can summon a Dwemer Spider that heals uh, for 1,144 health and restores 111 magicka and stamina to you and your allies within 5 meters every 1 second for 8 seconds. So a total of around uh, 900 to 1,000 magicka or stamina. It's not as strong as Symphony of Blades, of course, but it offers a heal in addition to that. So it's definitely one of the best options you've got if you can't get Symphony, and there's a little healing involved as well. Another thing you could run is Bodgun. This has long been one of the best healer sets in the game. This gives you max magicka, and you, when you heal yourself or an ally, you have a 10% chance to summon a totem for 6 seconds that heals you and all allies within 5 meters for... 2889 health every one second and it can occur every 10 seconds so this just procs a random healing field when you heal an ally or yourself and everybody inside of the healing field standing next to the totem will get quite a big heal every one second for six seconds that's uh, also a very very good healer set another thing you could use is choke thorns this gives you mag recovery and when you heal an ally you have a 15 percent uh, chance to summon a strangler sapling that heals you or an ally for 22 uh, K health, so the heal is huge, but it only goes to one person, either you or an ally. This might work very well together with the healing ward that I've shown you before, the shield, if you're, for example, in charge of healing one specific person, like the tank, in a trial or so, uh, and that's a nice option for this. Or, still not a bad helmet, Earth Gore from Veteran Bloodroot Forge gives you 4% healing done, and this gives a 34k uh, boost heal to the lowest health ally so this really saves lives and it's also a very good option still if you're only in charge of healing one or two persons or even for dungeons where there's only four persons in there anyway um, so I wouldn't run this in trials unless I'm healing one specific person like the tank 
but for dungeons and stuff it's still nice or for sp things where you have to heal one specific person uh, however this effect only occurs every 35 seconds about so it's got quite a long downtime so choke thorn is another option if you're in charge of healing one person so that's pretty much your options there symphony sentinel of raku gums or bot guns choke thorn or earth gore these sets should be at hand if you're a healer and yep the buddy set is completely up to you I've still got Twilight on here, which gives uh, me Minor Aegis, Spell Damage, Magicka Recovery, and then uh, if my group members uh, heal from a Synergy f that they got from me, they gain Minor Force, increasing their critical damage. However, you can also get Minor Force from Beast Trap, which most DPS runs. The reason I've had that set on for a long time is because I've been running with a group with mostly Magicka Sorcerers that did not use Beast Trap or Channel ac uh, Acceleration, so this was pretty welcome there. However, the body set is completely up to you or to the content you're playing. So if most of your DPS are Stamina or Magickas that use Barb Trap or Channel Acceleration, this set is not going to be good. The usual candidates for, for really good healer sets are Worm Cult if you're running mostly with Magicka damage dealers because this reduces the cost of your magic abilities by 4%. Uh, not just yours, but yours and the whole Trials group, so 11 other players within 28 meters of you. So this is uh, very nice for Magicka DPS Sustain. Another another set that's very nice for Magicka DPS Sustain is Hollow Fangs from uh, Moongrave Fane. That's also one of the top healer sets right now if you've got mostly Magicka DPS. Another really good set is Yorval's Guidance. This gives you Magicka Recovery healing done and it increases the duration of all your major buffs, minor buffs and damage shields by 40%. So that's a really good healer set as well. This comes from Scale Caller. Another thing you could use is Mending from Ethereum Archive. This gives you Magicka Recovery, Magicka Healing Done, or when you use uh, <laughs> not or when you use an uh, an area of effect heal ability, you reduce the weapon damage of all the enemies within 10 meters of you by 415. So it reduces the enemy's damage. It's also a very nice set in, in certain situations. Martial Knowledge is a bit of a long stretch for a Necro Healer, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, and Fallable Ether isn't really necessary because we can get the Minor Vulnerability from elsewhere. Let me see what else I've got with me. Sanctuary is always very nice. Uh, this gives you max health, healing taken, max magicka, and it increases your healing received by 12% for you and 11 group members within 10 meters of you. So if you're always stacking tightly with your group, you can uh, increase everybody's healing received. And this is very easy to farm. This comes from banished cells, so century is always nice to have as well. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The healer set might be okay from Dragonstar, though it's probably not my, my top pick. It just gives you minor mending at all times, increasing your healing done by a percent. Uh, but yes, that's about it. So go with either Hollow Fangs, Yorvolds, or Mending, or Warm Cult, whatever the, the content needs really. Like healer sets very, very much dependent on what trial you're in and how your group is set together. However, the traits on the body pieces that's important for the build is Divines with Magicka Enchant on all the small pieces, meaning hands, feet, waist and shoulders, all in Divines with Magicka Enchants, and then the big pieces, head, chest and legs, in infused with the uh, Tristat Glyphs to give you more of everything. Alright, I'll quickly go into the CP and then we're done with this. This is just a general setup, obviously this will vary from trial to trial. 72 into Ironclad, 16 Spell Shield, 56 in Hardian Elemental Defender, 51 in Thick Skinned, and 19 into Quick Recovery, 44 into Warlord, 75 and 75 in Arcanist and Tenacity, 56 in Tumbling, 20 in Shadow Ward, 75 in Blessed, 81 in Elfborn, 49 in Elemental Expert, and 22 in Spell Erosion because I don't know where else to put them. You could probably put a couple more from Spell Erosion into Staff Expert here. Say you put this down to 10 or 11 and then just do a bit more damage with your uh, light and heavy attacks and then 40 into Thaumaturge to increase the damage of elemental blockade. 
All right, so much for that. As I said before, the only thing that will change with Greymore might be the choice of Monster Helmet because they're all getting changed a little bit. So it might be that even Chokethorn or Sentinel would be on the top end or maybe Botgun for the straight healing, depending on how big Symphony gets nerfed. But Monster Helmet's a situational anyway. So if your group needs more healing, it might be more uh, better to run Botguns instead of Symphony anyway if their sustain, uh, sustain is fine. And then, as I said, the body set is completely up to you or the content that you're running. Okay, I hope you're having fun with this. Uh, let me know how it goes with the healer build, if you can use it. Uh, if you've got any questions, just type them into the comments, and I'll see you next time.